years of World War II, Allies were losing ships to Nazi U-boats at an alarming rate in the North Atlantic. These losses caused a considerable strain on resources for the war, the loss of many ships, and lives. The Allies wanted a very large ship that could be an aircraft carrier to patrol and attack U-boat wolf packs. They were desperate to find a way to win the North Atlantic and would consider almost any idea. Enter Project Habakkuk. An idea was put forth to convert existing icebergs to aircraft carriers by building landing strips on the iceberg and mounting engines to power them. The advantage to this plan was icebergs were available and the building of the carrier would be relatively inexpensive. However, upon further investigation, this proved not to be feasible. Despite the failure of the iceberg idea, the Allies were intrigued by the idea of an ice ship. Ice could be formed or molded easier than steel and concrete, and was cheaper as water is more abundant. Around 1942, the Allies began Project Habakkuk. The first test was to create a prototype at Lake Patricia in Alberta, Canada. The prototype was made from regular ice, 60 feet long, and weighed 1,000 tons. However, regular ice was too brittle and would melt too fast in the relatively warm waters of the Atlantic Ocean. The solution? Picrete. Canadian lumberjacks noticed that ice formed by a water and sawdust mixture was extremely strong and had a slower melting rate. Jeffrey Pike proposed using a water and wood pulp mixture to form a strong ice which was known as picrete. Picrete slabs were tested and showed positive results. Test slabs were very strong and durable and lasted surprisingly long before melting. The Allies decided to move forward with their ice ship. The plan called for a ship that would be 2,000 feet long, 300 feet wide, 40 foot thick hull, and weigh 2 million tons. This ship would carry 150 fighter planes or twin engine bombers, and would be armed with 40 dual barrel turrets and many anti-aircraft guns. To prolong the life of the ice, designers called for a refrigeration system with hundreds of feet of piping running throughout the ice and a cork or fiberboard insulation. It was estimated that the building of this ship would require 300,000 tons of wood pulp, 25,000 tons of fiberboard, 35,000 tons of timber, 10,000 tons of steel, and would have an estimated cost of 700,000 pounds, which is now $132 million in American money today. When construction was about to begin, the Allies began to have second thoughts. Costs were very high for a project with unknown results. In addition, steel and timber were in short supply and many felt that those resources should be used for proven projects. Use of this much wood pulp would also put a strain on paper production. Diverting manpower and resources for such a large-scale project was beginning to lose its supporters. In addition to resource issues, concern was mounting over how the refrigeration system would work and its effectiveness. The final nail in the coffin for the project came in late 1943, as the Allies had gained control of the North Atlantic, improved their aircraft range, and their U-boat detection. This eliminated the need for an Allied North Atlantic aircraft carrier, and the idea melted away. Thanks for watching. Please drop a like and subscribe.